Hello everyone, I'm Michael Ruger. I'm the managing partner at Greenbush Financial Group. Today we'll be talking about what happens to your pension plan if the company that sponsors your pension plan goes bankrupt. Obviously, super serious situation. A lot of employees that have these pension plans are banking on them to be there so they can retire and some of them are sizable. But in that scenario that for some reason the company hits hardship and then they go bankrupt, is there an organization that steps in essentially to save your pension and continue to pay you monthly benefit? So some employees are aware that there is an organization out there called the PBGC, which stands for Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. So, and the idea behind the PBGC is all of these companies that have pension plans each year pay premiums into this PBGC and then they're supposed to be the backstop if a company uh, defaults on essentially its pension plan and can't make those payments, they're supposed to step in and make payments on its behalf. But what a lot of people don't realize is this PBGC issues annual reports each year to tell everyone what the financial status is of that organization and unfortunately within the next 10 years that organization itself may face some insolvency. So you could see where this is a, a big risk for employees going forward. So what is the PBGC? The PBGC is a federal agency that was set up in 1974 to protect employees that are covered in the private sector that have pension plans. So the PBGC coverage does not apply to state and government pensions just employees in the private sector. And the way it works is people hear federal agency and they think it's taxpayer funded, but it's actually not. The way the PBGC gets its revenue is all the companies that sponsor pension plans pay premiums in the PBGC each year and they hold on to them. Then when a pension fails, they step in and start making pension payments to those employees instead of the company. Now, in the 2017 report that they came out with, the numbers are starting to get daunting. Like there's two different trusts within the PBGC. One is for single employer and one is for multi-employers. And the single employer trust, the PBGC, is now paying out about 840,000 plan participants. So these were all employees that were once part of a company. Their uh, company went defunct and now the pension plan got handed over to the PBGC as a backstop. And when you look at how much they're paying out each year, 2017 to those 840,000 plan participants, they padded out about $5.7 billion. Now the problem is in their financial reports, they came out and pretty much said, if Congress does not make changes to the laws, then the PBG itself could face financial insolvency, which means all those employees that are getting payments from them now, and then future employer, employer plans that fail might not be protected. And the reason why Congress comes into play is even though it's not taxpayer dollars, Congress sets the premium payment amounts that have to be paid in the PBGC each year by all these companies that have these pension plans. So the PBGC, has two different programs under its umbrella. It's got the single employer program and then it has the multiple employer program. And it's very important to understand which one you might fall under. So under the single employer program, that's for private employers, just one company, and then they step in and pay the benefits as needed. Some examples in the past of single employers that they've had to step in for are like United Airlines, Lehman Brothers, Circuit City. These were individual companies that went defunct, had pension plans, and the PBGC had to step in and pay benefits on behalf of those employees. The multiple employer program, that's more unions. So if you have union workers scattered amongst a bunch of different companies that have a pension plan for the union, then that's considered a multiple employer. Um, an example, in 2017, they had to step in for the United Furniture workers pension plan that covered about 10,000 plan participants. So now they're providing financial assistance. So there's a big difference in the level of benefits between the two programs. The single employer program, the benefit guarantees from the PBGC are larger, where in the multiple employer, they just provide what's called financial assistance, which has a much lower benefit threshold if they have to step in and assist with a plan. So here's the big question. The dollar amount that the PBGC will step in to guarantee of your pension amount. And this is where the difference is big 
between that single employer and the multiple employer plans. So these amounts are listed out on the PBGC website and they're actually indexed for inflation, so they change a little bit each year. But based on the 2017 report, I'm gonna show you a quick illustration that says, you know, the PBGC guarantees for a 65 year old and a failed single employer plan can be up to $60,136 annually, while a plan participant with 30 years of service and a failed multiple employer plan caps out at $12,870. The multiple employer program guarantee for a participant with only 10 years of service caps out at $4,290 per year. So you can see the huge dramatic difference between 60,000 versus about 12,000 between single employer and multiple employer plans. Also, the way they calculate the guaranteed amounts is different between the two programs. The single employer plan is very easy and straightforward. The PBGC actually has a chart that shows what your guaranteed max amount is. Here's a sample of the chart, but the full chart is listed on their website versus the multiple employer program, which has more of a complex formula to figure out what your guaranteed benefit actually is. But you have to ask the question that if the organization guaranteeing my pension is insolvent, how much is that guarantee really worth? And this is the real world scenario that's playing out for the PBGC right now. Now, the single employer program is actually in pretty good shape. They're still running a slight deficit, but they're actually estimated to run a surplus for the next few years. However, the multiple employer program that they've got, they mentioned about 20 times in their annual report the following. The multiple employer program faces very serious challenges and is likely to run out of money by the end of fiscal year 2025. More specifically, they've put a 50% probability that that plan runs out of money in 2025 and a 99% probability that it runs out of money by 2036. And they're calling for Congress to say, if you don't raise the premiums, this is a real risk to people that are receiving their pension payments from us. But raising the premium payments for these multiple employer plans is a double-edged sword. Yes, it does provide that program with more assets to pay benefits if these uh, programs go defunct, but it also could push plans faster into bankruptcy or insolvency because the premium payments into the program are higher. So it's really kind of a catch-22 situation. It's also important to note that while they have two programs, one that's very healthy and one that's not healthy, the programs, the PBGC is not allowed to shift assets between the two programs. They can't shift money from the healthy single employer over to the multiple employer to stop the insolvency from happening. Retirees should not make this decision lightly when they decide whether or not they're gonna take their pension payments as a lump sum and roll to an IRA or take the monthly benefit over their lifetime. There's a lot of factors that come into play besides just the solvency of the company and the PBGC. There's things like rates of return, how much income you're gonna need, the survivor benefits that are available to your spouse. All these things come into play when you're trying to make that decision. And I can tell you it is a case by case basis what makes sense for each individual. So if you ever have any questions on this or you want us to run analysis for you, feel free to reach out to us. If you like this video, please click the subscribe button below. Thank you.